Greetings YouTube, JC, Bad Edit Pro with a video about audio, and today we're going to talk about this realistic STA2380 stereo receiver from 1989. Matter of fact, let's take a look at it in the catalog. Taking a look at the Radio Shack catalog from 1989, we see that the STA2380 was their second from the top of the line. The top of the line was the STA2700. Uh, $399 for 1989. The one above it was $500. And uh, that's a lot of money in $1989. I can tell you that I could not afford this at the time. There was no way. And just up here at the top, it says, uh, uh, you know, 20 to 20,000 hertz. Uh, no more than 0 0.05 total harmonic distortion. Not bad. 6 FA, FM and AM stations. Taking a look here at the specifications. Uh get down here thank you very much screen recorder please cooperate uh, frequency response 20 to 20,000 signal to noise ratio 84 DB for the phono 100 DB for the auxiliary uh, might be a little less than that and of course it could be just age making it a little hissy uh, it's not terribly noisy at all as a matter of fact it's very quiet but uh, it's not 100 DB I can tell you that much or at least not at the output <laughs> you know uh, the radio is very good, uh, both the AM and the FM, wideband uh, AM and uh, very nice FM. We'll take a more intense look at that uh, a little bit later on and uh, get all those lovely inputs there and everything. And I always like to look in these catalogs at these suggested setups, you know, they had uh, that would come with this. Look at this. You get the linear tracking turntable here for $1,019. It's 110 a month. Then here you get the uh, straight arm turntable uh, with a set of speakers. That was $759. $1479 for this big deluxe model here. That's a lot of cash, man, to drop on a stereo. $1259. That's with the uh, STA2700 there. So these were all of the things that you could get from Radio Shack. And Radio Shack sold a lot of junk through the years. There's no denying that. Boy, that's a nice looking system, isn't it? They sold a lot of junk through the years, but they also sold some very nice high-end stuff. And uh, I've always been very partial to them. So I was happy to find yet another realistic amplifier. Well, now that we've seen what it looked like brand spanking new, let's take a look at what this one looks like uh, more than 20 years later. It's uh, a little bit beat up. I think that's the reason why I got it so cheap. I got it under 100 bucks. However, uh, what it lacks in cosmetic beauty, it makes up for in performance. It performs 100% of uh, what it should, or at least as far as I can tell. Got a real power switch on this thing, which is nice. I like that. It's not standby. It's actually, it turns the thing off. Speakers A and B, and I got two speaker systems hooked up. The A speakers are a set of Polk speakers, which you guys have seen before. And then above that is a set of Sonys that I've had for three million years I just like the way they sound and they're nice for listening at low volume uh, we got a headphone jack here and I'm pleased to report that the headphone uh, amplifier in this uh, works pretty good and it's acceptably quiet uh, so that's nice um, gonna have to get some new headphones though but it doesn't have anything to do with this amplifier bass control treble control here's your balance control and what's interesting about this particular amp is is that I think somebody at one point got in to service it and when they did, they didn't center the um, balance to line up with the markings on the front when it's on the detent. So here's the detent. It should be about there, but it's not. Of course, uh, it functions perfectly, so when it's in the detent, both channels are balanced. Great part here, I love these little buttons. It's a big selling point for me, one of the reasons I bought this thing. Um, you have a high filter here. It cuts everything off above like, you know, 8 kilohertz. Um, nice for listening to very hissy things or old records. Uh, it knocks some of the scratch off the top end. Here we have a loudness control. Well, that's pretty standard. Then we have a mono switch. And unlike uh, most receivers where the mono stereo switch is linked with the muting on the FM radio and it only works on the radio, this works on all the channels. So you can listen to old mono records in mono, which is really cool. And you can also spot check the head alignment on tape decks. Just plug it into the amp, throw it in mono. If you hear any phase error, you know it's off. And uh, you can tweak them up and get them to where they're balanced and uh, all that good stuff. So that's nice. 
Here's the radio section here. Below that is the selection controls. Uh, we get a phono input. This is a CD input. This is a video or auxiliary input. And a a a here's FM. Here's AM radio. Over here, you got two tape decks in and out. And then you have switches over here that allow you to dub from tape B to tape A or tape A to tape B, depending on how you set them up. Very nice feature indeed. I'm not going to be using that at the moment, but uh, it's nice to know that you can do that, uh, especially if you run into a thing where you're doing a lot of dubbing. So a very versatile input-output structure on this guy. And, and here we got a big scuff. <laughs> Something happened to it, but no big deal. Uh, pretty simple layout as far as the display is concerned. You have a power meter here, and then this tells you what you're switched into. So if I switch here, you'll be able to see the difference. You know, we're on phono, we're on CD, we're on the auxiliary input there. And let's go ahead and check out the radio. We'll check out the AM side first. We are locally owned and operated. Our installers are PWD employees, not subcontractors. PWD is certified by the EPA for lead safe renovation. At PWD well, good for PWD. Very nice sounding AM section in this. Very, very wide band AM radio. Now, I don't have a whole lot of uh, choice here to listen to. I've got about three or four stations that I can hear uh, during the day, but of course at night you can hear a lot, and it uses a loop antenna, which you can see probably out of focus back there. So that's nice. I provided the antenna. Uh, you get six presets for your AM. I think I've got like three of them set. Nice wideband sound on the AM radio, but surprisingly for 1989, the uh, radio itself only tunes up to 1620. And uh, it was right around that time that they uh, came out with the extended AM band in the United States, where we got 10 extra channels. It was like 1610 to 1710, and that's called the extended AM band. Uh, this radio will not pick any of those up, which is fine with me because I don't have anything to listen to up there and I don't really care. The FM radio is very nice, very sophisticated. Switch over to AM or FM. You get six presets here too. You get a signal meter there. And this is a stereo indicator. And this is my, our local PBS station. And when they're running talk, they actually have it set up where they broadcast in mono, which is uh, a pro uh, an engineer in Roanoke used to do that, and I bet you anything he does it for this station too. He used to set up a timer to uh, switch the stereo pilots off. I bet you anything Paxton set that up here too. Yes. Engineer I used to work with years ago because I think he does a lot for um, public radio here in the western part of the state. So anyhow, uh, there's your FM side. Got some neat controls on this radio. You have a uh, scanner here that allows you to scan for the next station. There you go. You have a memory button. Just push the button and then push any of these buttons and it remembers uh, you know, what uh, button you assigned whatever station you're tuned to. Uh, to. Then we have uh, the mute button here, which is pretty standard. If the signal drops too low, then it mutes it out if the station's not tuned in. And then here we have a, a blend circuit where it uh, actually kind of collapses the stereo image a bit on weak FM stations and reduces noise. Uh, that comes pretty standard in cars and you can't switch it off. So a lot of the times if you're listening to uh, the radio in the car and it says it's stereo, if you're not right under the transmitter, chances are you're probably hearing mostly mono. On the FM antenna, it actually has a great big F connector on it. Now the last radio that I had, reaching over here to show you something, I had to use this guy. Here is the F connector on this end, 75 ohm, this 300 ohm converter, and then there's supposed to be spade lugs on here, but guess what? Because that radio uh, had those little uh, uh, holes that you slid it in and then clipped it on, I had to cut those off. So I'm sure I was losing a lot of signal strength through here, and then I was using this set of rabbit ears up here that you guys have seen in my videos they're very sensitive so that's nice another selling point for me was the fact that it had an f connector on the back and there you go pretty much it simple basic loud amplifier got a great phono preamp in it 
uh, very nice indeed. Works very well with uh, my Ortofon CC DJS cartridge hooked into the turntable here. I don't pick any, uh, up any hum and it sounds very, very good. So I was listening to some scratchy 45s, being able to put it in mono and use the high filter made that a very pleasant thing to do. And that's just about it. Simple, basic, very well made, sounds good. This will hold me for a while until I find a new one uh, that uh, I can afford and a new one that I like. If I find a new one I like, I may just be stuck with the vintage ones from now on. Anyhow, JC, Bad Edit Pro, waving bye-bye. Thanks for watching.